Good morning. This is Agashvani Kohima. The morning news read by Jonas Yantan. Member of the Economic Advisory Council to Prime Minister EACPM Office Sanjeev Sanyal yesterday laid the foundation stone of Subhash Chandra Bose, an Indian National Army INA Memorial Park at Rizazo Village in Peck District. Sanyal, along with Director of ESEPM, Devi Prasad Mishra, physically inspected the entire area of the proposed site and expressed confidence that a special fund allocation towards the construction by the Ministry of Art and Culture to the expectation of the people of Nagaland would prove worthy. Earlier in the morning, the officials accompanied by Dr. Engineer Veko Suro, State Protocol Officer Hupa Sai Detsio, and villagers also trekked to Sere River. The officials have returned to Kohima, and today they are scheduled to meet state government departments, agencies and other important dignitaries. Science and Technology Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh has said that under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India is now steering the world in innovative technologies. Addressing the IIT Delhi Alumni Public Service Day function, he said India is today among the world's top five econ- economies and it has jumped from 81st to 48th rank in the Global Innovation Index 2022. Dr. Singh said India is today one of the leading users of known conventional energy, including electric automobiles, wind and solar energy. The minister called for wider synergy among all streams of professions for achieving the Amritkal goals over the next 25 years. The Secretary Department of Science and Technology Professor Ape Garantikar has said that India can steer 6G standardization and become a global exporter of such technologies. Addressing a session at the Indian Mobile Congress in New Delhi yesterday, Karan Dikar said India is contributing hugely to the massive escalation of global data volume and hope that by 2030, India's share may increase to one-third of the total data generated. He further added that India has an ecosystem to bring the country to a position of strength in terms of mobile network technologies. Kerala is in a state of high alert following the serial blasts that took place at a prayer meeting organized by Jehovah's Witnesses at a convention center in Kalamasseri in Kochi yesterday. The blast sent shock waves throughout the state, claimed the life of a woman and left 45 others injured. The injured have been admitted to different hospitals in the region and the condition of five is said to be serious. A 53-year-old woman and a 12-year-old child admitted in hospital succumbed to their injuries, taking the death toll in the bomb blast at the Jehovah's Witnesses prayer meeting to three. They were admitted with more than 90% burn injuries. ADGP Law and Order MR Ajit Kumar told media persons in Kochi that a person, Dominic Martin, who claims himself to be a member of the Jehovah's Witness group, surrendered at the Kodakar police station in Trisur district. He has claimed to be behind the blast. The ADGP said his claims are being verified. An NIA team also visited the blast site. Assam government is all set to give a major infrastructure boost in the education sector. Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sarma in a social media post informed that 4,000 state-of-the-art schools will be constructed in the state by 2028. Sarma, along with Education Minister Ranoj Beku, held a review meeting yesterday in this direction. The Chief Minister mentioned that the target has been set to build two schools every day for the next five years. Nagaland Governor La Kanesan has congratulated Kitenlo K. Tono for winning gold medal in the 90 to 95 kilogram tanting fight category in Panjak Silla of the ongoing 37 national games in Goa yesterday. Taking the social media platform X, the governor extended heartiest congratulations to him. He said the whole state is elated and proud of his achievements. And in cricket, in IIICC Men's Cricket World Cup, India defeated England by two wickets at Ekana Stadium in Lucknow yesterday. 
chasing a victory target of 230 runs, England were all out at 129 runs in 34.5 overs. Batting first, India were 229 runs for 9 in the stipulated 50 overs. After a disastrous start, Captain Rohit Sharma consolidated the Indian innings with a gritty knock of 87 runs. For England, David Willey took three wickets. Earlier, England won the dose and opted to field. With that, we come to the end of the morning news. Have a nice day.